it's my honor to introduce class valedictorian, Mr. Piers Blasi, who will be speaking to us this evening on Times Change. Greetings, one and all. It is an honor to be standing here as the valedictorian of the Penarjo High School, class of 2015. I could not be here in this position were it not for my fellow students. When I moved into the school district in third grade, I had no idea what events would lie ahead. And being at the top of the graduating class certainly did not even enter my mind, nor likely in the mind of my third grade teacher, Miss Piccolo, or any teacher I was ability group with until seventh grade. And also, what were the odds that the two students who moved into this, into this small enclave in third grade, Marissa and I, both in Miss Piccolo's class, who graduated in the two, top two positions? Was it Penarjo who changed our destiny, or was it we who changed Penarjo? Times change, people change, the world changes. Times change, but still remaining is the social Darwinism that has been used to promote the discrimination our country was founded upon. Beginning with the numerous ugly compromises that kept our African American kin in chains, and continuing through the expulsion of Native Americans completely from states such as Pennsylvania, and through the constant warfare against the tribes and forced relocations of the Native people from their tribal lands. Through the building of the Transcontinental Railroad with regulations barring immigration of Chinese females, and then the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 which was the first immigration act to target a specific ethnic group, through laws taking away the citizenship of women who married foreign men, through the internment of Japanese citizens in World War II, through Jim Crow laws, and through U.S. continued imperialism and wars against nations that are not white and not Christian. Almost 11 years ago, in June 2004, Penarjo salutatorian Jessica Hatton urged everyone to fight against discrimination. A local newspaper reported, she said to the audience, if we each treat people of any race with respect they deserve, hopefully others will follow suit. In the domestic and foreign arena, have we as a country treated everyone with respect? Times change, but injustices, both domestic and foreign, are ever present in our country. A look at the national news finds us watching public rebellions and demonstrations similar to the people and students of the 1960s and 1970s demonstrating for racial justice and against foreign warfare in Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. Huge social and political changes are coming to America in the future. The news is full of reports of people across the nation rebelling and protesting against the government for use of deadly force against unarmed victims. <coughs> One such deceased victim, Walter Scott, a 50-year-old African-American man in South Carolina who fell behind on child support payments, so heavy he was barely able to run away, was shot with his back turned when a 33-year-old white officer fired his gun eight times. Society is changing, and the people in society are changing, and they no longer ignore injustices. Has the use of deadly force against unarmed victims prompted any action or statement of any student group in this high school? Is the answer no, because the majority of people in this high school don't identify with the unarmed victims? In less than 20 years, the majority of the people in America and the workforce will not look like the people this graduating class has been seeing in the Penarjo High School halls these past years. How will the students in this graduating class fit into society where the majority does not look like them? While these changes are coming, what has been the focus of your school years, and has the school system prepared you? Coming out of high school, are we better served having a local champion football or wrestling team, or having the skills to think when someone is playing the political system to enrich themselves at society's expense? Is the softball's team division and district championship more important than being taught necessary scientific concepts to evaluate the latest corporate proposal that will make someone very wealthy off the labor and natural resources of our country? And it is our labor, our resources, and our country Schools that teach students that people in society have a duty to take care of each other are no more guilty of indoctrination than, student, than schools which focus on preaching winner-take-all social Darwinism in part by bestowing accolades on members of high school teams who dominate other teams. 
So why is there such a focus on high school football, baseball, basketball, softball, or wrestling teams, and team membership, when there are so little degrees of separation of talent and ability among the sports teams? Colonial League teams and District 11 teams, with its four school population divisions, don't even produce one Division I or two college players a year. No District AA teams or Colonial League teams have won state titles with the exception of Bethlehem Catholic's wrestling team and Moravia's tennis team. Yet athletic competition against other schools is a rallying point of the high school masses. Why do we as a people in society need to physically dominate another group of people to have our self-esteem raised? Student speeches today will recollect fondly the traditional bonfires, dances, proms, homecoming, charity events, and other occasions. But our school experience is not a fond, it's not a fond experience for everyone. Most students will not receive private college scholarships based on a criteria of having a positive attitude. No matter how athletic someone is, not everyone will be chosen to play on the bas baseball field or basketball court. Only one student can be voted a particular class officer, prom queen, or most likely to succeed. While these school years have been a utopia and self-fulfilling prophecy for a certain group of high school students, for other of us, school has just been the beginning of a long life lesson about our society and the value of wealth, social status, connections, and race. I owe my place as valedictorian today to the state of Pennsylvania for instituting keystone exams and to advanced placement courses, which decrease the importance of subjectivity in the grading process. Race and sex cannot be taken into consideration when being, when being graded on a keystone or AP exam. I did not split hairs to get where I am academically. I studied and performed. I did not bargain or appeal. Likewise, were not for Colonial League rules, which took the subjectivity out of, out of team membership decisions and mandated actual competition, competition for positions and playing time, it is unlikely I would have been the number one singles tennis player for the high school team for the past two years. And unlikely I would have been seen fifth in district singles competition in my senior year and made it to the quarterfinals round of play or named fifth best male tennis player in the Colonial League. I accomplished this without a single tennis lesson and without playing tennis indoors during the winter. Without rules mandating competition for sport team membership, could I have participated at the varsity level on a particular Penarjo High School sports team at all? Would other students in other schools participate in varsity sports without team membership criteria based on competition in tennis? The Lower Marion large school AAA boys tennis team in 2015 and the PW, they won the PIAA Tennis Championship, and they had 17 members, four who were not white. Of the top five Colonial League male tennis players this year, two were not white. Yet non-whites are seemingly absent from rosters in other high school sports, where team membership is determined by coaches. Did our time here adequately prepare the graduating students for the social changes, changes coming at us like waves on an ocean beach? If our time here did not prepare the student body, Will the students take the positive steps necessary to welcome the future that is near? There are many questions posed here, and they can't be expected to be solved by one high school student when a whole country has failed to address questions of social injustice. I close my speech with two quotes. The first is from Martin Luther King. Everyone can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to be, have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. Students who graduate today, will you decide to take everything in your path and leave ever increasing numbers of families in homeless camps and crazed people who own jet aircrafts for their own amusement or own a fleet of sports cars and six digit figure yachts? Or will you make it your responsibility and the responsibility of the government to ensure that no one is left to fend for themselves? while others engorge themselves on the wealth of the country and labor the people. The next quote is from the scriptures of, of the Buddha. Thousands of candles can be lighted from a single candle, and the life of the candle will not be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. Will you light candles for others, or will you snuff them out? 
Will you treat others of different races with the respect they deserve, or will you deny opportunity for others who don't look like you? The currents of change are coming, and we're all in the same boat. We need to help each other, not battle and scheme to take everything there is for our group or ourselves. As young adults beginning our way in life, it is, worth, it is our responsibility to steer toward the correct course and work with each other. Times change. Will you? Well, so